this is um, um, alignment for shoulders and neck. And I refer to this as shoulder loops sometimes, but really it's just important to know the actions to come into this alignment. And we take this into a lot of our poses in working with shoulders, head and neck. Here it is from the side. This area from the pelvis to your armpit, I refer to as the side body and speak to lengthening this area. We work a lot with the breath. I find in working with the shoulders and neck, it's a fine line between releasing tension and creating it. And so working with the breath is really important here. So we'll inhale and fill up the torso. It's the intercostal muscles you're asking to expand in the rib cage, and we're doing it with the breath. So inhale and think of filling yourself up. The whole rib cage area expands, and what happens is your spine lengthens. Consider yourself a yoga action doll. Inhale, lengthen your spine, fill yourself up. So the side body gets long. And then these are the heads of the arm bones. Take them straight back and the top of the throat comes back. So your head is right over your shoulders, shoulders over your hips, hips aligned with the ankles. Here it is again, I'm gonna add a piece now. Hands on your hips is helpful here. Resist your hips down and inhale, lengthen. There is a shrug of the arm bones, but I'm lifting and expanding the musculature underneath the arm bones and not using neck muscles. This is no. Here's yes. The heads of the arm bones go straight back. And now watch my shoulder blades. I keep my arm bones up and take my shoulder blades down the back and open the throat. The head slides right back over the shoulders. This is a basic alignment. You'll hear me saying a lot of these same actions in the poses that we'll do for the shoulders and neck. In this pose, you'll need a yoga strap. Fold the strap in half. You really don't need much length. And it doesn't matter where the buckles are. Just take a strap. Place the strap behind you. Notice I have my palms facing back away from me, and I'm holding the strap about a little bit wider than my shoulders. And that's the placement of the strap. You'll bring, bending the elbows, bring the hands to your hips. Feet are straight ahead. All those principles of the legs apply, tailbone down. Here's an important part. Inhale and shrug up. I want you to lengthen the side of your body and bring your shoulders back and then stretch your arms. In this position, open your feet as wide as your yoga mat. Bend the knees and take a seat and then shoulders and arms come overhead. Here's how we work the pose. Inhale, arms go up towards the sky You'll feel shoulder blades come on the back more. So here's shoulder blades not on the back. Here's lifting arms up and shoulder blades coming toward the spine. Then big exhale, slide the shoulder blades with your arms toward overhead. It's a great release for the neck. I repeat, arm bones up, shoulder blades with the arms, exhale. To come out of the pose, hands to hips. You'll have to bring your torso up at least halfway. Thighs go back, inhale, stand straight up. So this is a great shoulder stretch. If you're sitting in front of a computer all day, stand up and do this stretch, it'll do wonders for you. This one starts with hands clasped behind the back. Inhale, lengthen the side body and bring your shoulders straight back and extend your arms long. From the front, one more time, I'm bending my elbows, long side body, shoulders back, extend your arms, and just enjoy this stretch. Breathing and expanding in the upper chest area. Feels good. And then release your arms. If you're not able to clasp your hands easily, it's a time to grab your yoga strap. You'll get the same benefit. What you wanna be sure to be able to get so I'm gonna start 
strap wider than my shoulders, long side body, shoulders back. You want to be able to have, instead of the arms rolled forward, the shoulders and arms roll back. If your arms are tighter and you go to straighten your arms and you're in this position, it will be of no benefit. In fact, it could cause your neck to, to have some strain. So go wide to feel good. Shoulders back. Enjoy the pose. Release to come out. This next pose, you'll need your yoga strap. This is an eight foot strap. I find for taller people, you may need a 10 foot strap. I'm about 5'5", five, five. it works fine for me, maybe even if you're 5'8", but above that, you'll want a 10 foot strap. If you're a bigger torso, you'll want a 10 foot strap. Start by folding your strap in half just to find the middle of it, and then place the middle of the strap in the upper back. Just like that, it's right underneath the armpits up in the upper back. And then make sure your straps are the same length in front. So you don't want one long and one short. Same length. From here, carefully take the straps straight over your shoulders. You'll see them back. I'm making it snug and straight over. And then you'll cross the straps behind you. And here you have to let go of the strap, bring your arms to the side, and hold the strap at your side. The tendency is to come forward, and this is not how we're going to go. Here's how we go. <clears throat> You'll inhale and lengthen the side body and bring your shoulders back. And from here, just simply pull straight down on the strap. This takes the shoulder blades down the back without taking the arm bones down, and it makes some nice length in the back of the neck. Here it is again, I'll come just sort of neutral. Inhale, long side body, shoulders back, and from here I pull straight down. Everyone loves this pose. One thing to be aware of, long side body, shoulders back. When we pull down, we tend to make the thighs and chest go forward or rib cage go forward. So thighs are back, tailbone down, rib cage back. Long side body, shoulders, just press straight down. You'll get the best release from here. This is a great pose for the rotator cuff muscles for both uh, strengthening and stretching or lengthening them. And for this one, I'd like you to use a strap, place a strap over one of your shoulders to start. Take the arm on the opposite side of the strap, reach back and hold the strap in your palm, grasp it. The other arm goes straight up and bending the elbow, take the strap. So the work in the pose is to inch your arm up your back and take fingers, hands toward each other now watch my bottom arm, and lengthen the side body, bring the shoulder back, and hug my shoulder blades on the back, and you're going to get more opening in this pose. Release, let go of the straps, and come on out of the pose. Here it is without the strap, I'll show it on the second side. Take some time and walk your arm up your back as far as you can. Arm comes straight up, clasp. I'm able to grab some fingers here and then I go up a little bit more. Now watch, bottom arm shrugs up, shoulder back, elbow forward, slide your shoulder blades toward each other. You'll get more deeply into the pose. Breathe here. And then release and come out of the pose. This pose can be demanding. Another way to work is simply to bring the arm across your back and clasp elbows. It's a beginning great way to work the pose. Another variation is to bring your arms to reverse Anjali Mudra. A similar stretch, great warm-up for doing the one with the strap. And then release, come out of the pose. 
This is a shoulder opener and strengthener pose. You start with your side to the wall, fingertips on the wall at shoulder height, elbow is bent and lower than the shoulder. This pose will stretch these muscles of the front shoulder and make the upper back stronger. Inhale and lengthen the side body. Take the shoulders back. And from here, start to walk your feet, your whole body away from the wall, keeping your throat open and breathe right here. You'll feel the stretch. Hold three to five to seven breaths. One thing not to do in the pose is to walk away from the wall so that the arm goes straight. The arm stays essentially in the same position as you pivot in space to turn away. To come out of the pose, turn side to the wall and release your arm. This is a twist. You'll start your arms in cactus position. If you place your arms this way, notice I have right angles at the armpit and right angles at the elbows. Now, if you place your arms and your forearms are up in the air, this is when you open your hands wider apart because it's important that you can place the back of the hands on the floor. So if you're like this, you gotta open up more. I'll show it with right angles. Knees come to chest, legs are together, feet flex. This is the ready position. Keeping your legs together, take them over to one side. Now the shoulder might pop up in the arm. Get the opposite shoulder out from underneath you and place this near shoulder on the floor. If the arm is still up, if you're feeling like you're in this position, just bring your hand to your hip and work the shoulder back. This is a great position to work the pose. To come out of the pose, here's what we're not gonna do. You're not gonna lift one leg up and bring the other and roll on out of the pose. Here's what I'd like you to do. Instead, we'll use more of the core muscles. To do that, think of bringing your sternum back, rib cage back, belly back, and place your spine on the floor to come on up. Here's a second side, you'll roll over. This shoulder, get it out from underneath you and roll the other shoulder to the floor. Open your hands out if you need to so you can press your hands into the floor and the shoulders. Now to come up, think of taking the spine to the floor behind you. Here it is, sternum back, rib cage back. Lift your belly to bring your legs up. Your voice should actually do that to come up. Here's one side again, so you can see the spine coming over, get your shoulders. Check this out, sternum back, rib cage back, lift your belly, bring your legs up and touch your feet down. Do each side three times with a great focus on spine going toward the floor to bring your legs up. Here's how to get into Shavasana so you have a really restful pose for the end of your practice. Lie back, legs together, feet flexed, robot arms. So we start out a bit active. Then pressing your elbows down into the floor, you'll activate the upper back muscles. Use them to lift your torso up and get your shoulder blades underneath you. And then lower your torso back down Arms come to A shape. Allow your legs to relax, your upper back to relax. And open your legs almost as wide as the mat. Use your first few exhalations to suggest for the body to become really heavy into the floor. A letting go for deeper relaxation.